everybody. This is Rivet here. Welcome back to the Hacienda's Kitchen. We're going to cook up something real good. Chesapeake Bay style seafood dinner here tonight. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to show you how to make it. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Chesapeake Bay, a little bit of background here. This is the northeastern part of the United States. This is North Carolina. These are the Outer Banks. This is Virginia, Washington, D.C. State of Maryland, Delaware. This is the Chesapeake Bay right here. And although it doesn't look like much, the United States is a huge country, and that's almost like inland ocean. And uh, growing up here on the eastern side of <clears throat> Virginia, uh, the Chesapeake Bay is a huge treasure tro trove of seafood and uh, shellfish and all kinds of good fishing and uh, camping and all that stuff. And the fish peppers uh, originated from around this area. Now the Chesapeake Bay is full of deep water and uh, you can have full ocean going shipping going all the way up in there to the Port of Baltimore, Inner Harbor. So let's uh, go over and start discussing some of the ingredients here that we're going to be using in uh, today's meal. Virginia and the Chesapeake Bay um, being in the south uh, a lot of southern food, a lot of southern recipes come from there. Uh, wonderful growing region, wonderful weather, a lot of fresh vegetables. And there's something called uh, Chesapeake tomatoes, Chesapeake uh, style tomatoes. And I've canned them. What they are is just fresh tomatoes mixed with uh, okra and onion and Old Bay seasoning. Now another version of Chesapeake style tomatoes utilizes corn. But that's the northern Maryland, Pennsylvania type stuff and uh, the Chesapeake tomatoes that I'm used to have okra in it. So this is a, is a side for um, a lot of the dishes and uh, I remember when I was a kid you'd go to buffets, uh, local restaurants, they always had Chesapeake tomatoes there and they had okra and it's good stuff and what you do is uh, you take these are tomatoes from my garden this year, Cherokee purples, okra that I planted, onions that we grew mix it with uh, salt and pepper and uh, Old Bay seasoning and then you cook them, you stew them and you can them and let me tell you it's good stuff okay we're also going to use my uh, fish pepper seasoning and let's talk about that here and I'll tell you a little bit about it alright let's talk about the fish peppers for a minute an heirloom pepper and they're from the Chesapeake Bay region and they were introduced in the oh, late 1700s early 1800s in the Chesapeake Bay region where they just flourished and chefs and cooks um, took them and uh, noticed that they went very well with fish and incorporated them in their recipes. Now every cook, every chef on the plantations and the hotels and the restaurants had their own recipe of how to turn these peppers into their own signature pattern. Okay? This is what a fish pepper looks like. <clears throat> when it is grown uh, it has these striated leaves. You can see these little ones, white and green. And the pepper is striped. Okay, very interesting, nice looking color. And that's why it's a very nice ornamental plant. Um, here we go. You can see the, the different colors. Then as it uh, matures, uh, it turns, starts to turn dark and red. And you can see the colors there. Until finally when it's fully mature, it's just an ordinary uh, red pepper. However, when it gets to this point, it's got a deep, rich, smoky flavor um, that's unique to the fish pepper. Now, um, once you harvest the peppers and you dry them, which I did in the dehydrator, then you grind them. But you've got to add your own secret um, spices, uh, as the chefs and the cooks did, to make your own signature pepper seasoning. Because the pepper will add the flavor and the heat, you, each cook, uh, each hotel, each restaurant wanted their own signature flavor. Now, <clears throat> a few years ago, in uh, serendipity and by accident, I went to a yard sale and I ran into an old timer with a, and I was buying a trunk and uh, I talked to him and uh, there was a recipe in there and he, his family was from the Chesapeake Bay so I got some of his recipe. Now I'm not going to tell you exactly what's in it and what the ratio is, but there is smoked sea salt, paprika, there's some cardamom, granulated onion in there, and uh, it's good stuff, okay? 
Now you can put whatever you want in there. Um, but this is the original uh, Chesapeake Bay flavor profile, what we got here. Okay? Alright, right now what we're going to do is make some of the white sauce gravy um, for our dish. What, what I got here is uh, two tablespoons of, of melted butter, <clears throat> to which I'm going to add two tablespoons of flour. And we're just going to make a general regular white sauce. But it's going to have a little bit of a, a twist here um, with the flavors. We're going to add the um, fish pepper spice and salt and pepper. And uh, that's going to be the little finishing touch. It's going to go over the rice and the fish when we make it. You can make a beer meunier and use wine instead of uh, the milk I'm going to add. Or uh, you could use chicken stock, uh, beef stock, whatever kind of stock you want. But I'm going to stick with the traditional stuff and uh, we're going to go with milk. So here I am adding a little bit of salt, pepper. Traditionally uh, they probably use white pepper but I don't have any. I just checked the Hacienda's cupboard, none to be had, and uh, then here we go. We're going to we're gonna be checking the spice flavors here as this cooks, and uh, you see it's already getting a nice red color, and uh, we'll go from there. Let me add the milk here. Okay, I always add cold milk to the hot thickeners. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just going to stir it and reduce it uh, until we got a good white sauce going. Okay, and here we are. <clears throat> now that we've made the white sauce and we've cooked it down until we don't have that floury taste, I've corrected it for uh, salt and pepper. Had just the amount, right amount of spice, so it is a little bit zingy. Now here's the secret. And you're going to think this is crazy, but this is what gives it its signature flavor. And remember, Every hotel, every restaurant, every chef had its own signature flavor. You want to, you see how thick it is? You don't want it that thick. So you want to cut it down a little bit with apple cider vinegar. Yep. And you're going to think this is going to curdle it, but no sir, it's not. And that's what that old timer said to me. You just make sure you cook your white sauce first, get it hot, and then you add not a lot, just a little bit of apple cider vinegar until it gets runny. And that's going to add that little edge in there, sharpness that is going to contrast so nicely with the fish and the rice when you make it. Now, if you add that apple cider vinegar when the stuff is cold, yeah, you're going to get a curdled mess. Okay, there you go. That is, oh my god, that smells delicious. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, there's a secret folks, and don't, oh, I'm burning something, don't tell me I didn't share it with you, because I did, you heard it first right here, and you see in this kitchen. Alright, let's talk about fish for a little bit. Traditionally, in the uh, Chesapeake Bay region, the fish you'd want to use is rockfish or flounder. Now obviously here in the Midwest, there is no way in heck I'm going to get rockfish or flounder. Certainly not a whole fish. Um, so I'm using a whole tilapia. So what you want is a whole fish, gutted, cleaned. They're good. Now, you guys flipping out with a ooh, it's got the face on. Well, if you've ever been fishing and you've ever been camping, that's just the way it is. And there's nothing bad about that. So what we're going to do here, we got my spice powder. Oops. We got basil from the garden, and we got butter here melted. And what we've got is a cast iron skillet baking hot in the oven because we're going to broil this baby and uh, we're going to cook it right. So, what we want to do is first of all, we're going to put some of this melted butter inside the cavity of the fish. Now you can do this with a fillet, I suppose, but it's not going to be the same thing, okay? Traditionally, this is a whole fish, and if you've never been 
to Virginia, Maryland, the Outer Banks, in order to whole rockfish bro. You just haven't tasted heaven, okay? But you know, that's neither here nor there. Then we're gonna salt it. Then we're gonna pepper it both sides. And the important part is we're gonna be very generous with the fish pepper seasoning. Because this is the signature of the dish. Okay? Now, put some in there. Now, then we're going to stuff that fresh basil in there. And you can use, I guess, rosemary if you'd like, or cilantro. But basil is good. Gives it a good flavor. And we're going to sprinkle even more of this stuff on there. And we're going to run some more butter. Butter. I love butter. Over this baby. And then... I'm going to show you here what we're going right. to do shortly. I got the uh, cast iron skillet <clears throat> heated up to 450 degrees. That's important. You want it smoking hot. Ouch. Now I'm going to turn the oven on to uh, broil. And now what we want to do is put a, a bunch of butter in that pan. Yep, it's going to smoke, but that's okay. <clears throat> this is how we're going to cook that fish just right. Southern way. Now we're going to take that beautiful little whole fish like such, and we're going to put it there. We're going to get that baby starting to cook. Now I'm going to take these hot pads, and I'm going to put this sucker right back under the broil. It's going to be good. Look at this baby. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Beautiful. Now we're going to take that puppy and we're just going to serve it on the centerpiece plate like such. Right now I'm going to put this hot pan right back in the oven. Now we're going to assemble this treasure. I'm going to show you goodness we're going to put on there. we got some Chesapeake tomatoes right here. Oh yeah, can you see them? Hot and juicy. Oh yeah. Tomatoes. And okra. Real nice. Got some good food right here. Okay. Here. We're going to put a little bit of that white rice on there. Now what I did with this white rice is those uh, fish peppers I showed you, I chopped them up and I put them in there just to add a little bit of color. Can you see them? I hope you can. That's purely optional. I thought that's the way to do it. I'm sure that's the way they did it back then. I don't know. I was not alive. But I do know that white rice, especially Carolina gold white rice, was a staple back then. And it's good stuff. I want to mix it. We got the white rice there. And then the pièce de resistance. The good stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got the gravy. No southern dish would be complete without the gravy. And we're just going to drizzle it over like that. Nicely. Now this gravy is very flavorful. And it's nothing you want to drown the food in. It's just going to give it a nice little touch. Okay? And there you have it. Historical Chesapeake Supper. Let's take a little look at that. That's some history right there. That's food history. Mid-Atlantic, Chesapeake Bay region. The Big South. Virginia. Now I wish I had a rockfish for that, but I don't. But I'll take a tilapia. So there you go, people. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
Thanks a lot for visiting the Rivets of Sienna's Kitchen. Let me tell you, that smells so good, I gotta, I gotta laugh. That is some serious chow. I've impressed myself. That's hard to do. Wow. Hope you've enjoyed it, people. Thank you. I appreciate your uh, visit, and know you're always welcome. I'm going to call up Donna. She's my good girl over there. Can't find on Philippines Island. She must be in Ethiopia somewhere.